My name is Marva Bryan, and I'm a tax incentive analyst and accounting manager. I take care of the finances, all the finances for the Development Authority. I manage an outside uh, accountant and um, just make sure that the books are okay and take care of the investments and, and things like that. In addition to that, the part of the job that I love the most now is I review all the projects that we are going to, we're looking to, um, to approve for incentives and I look at why, analyze them and say why we should provide the incentive for that project. Right now we have quite a few multifamily um, projects. They're, they're the most difficult ones because it's really just hard to say why you would provide an incentive to a multifamily deal that is seem to be going into an area that is not um, an underserved area. But Atlanta has just attracted so many um, companies that are looking for talent, and the talent is either they're coming out of our colleges or they'll come in following those jobs. And we need housing. We need the kind of housing that our new workers are looking for. The millennials just have a different need for a different type of housing. And so we're, that's, where, that's what we're doing right now. It, it gives me hope for our communities. It gives me hope for, there used to be a term called the trickle-down effect. And the trickle-down effect doesn't work, doesn't work fast enough. Economic development is very intentional. And I find that it's that intentionality that says we'll focus on, on this or we'll focus on that challenge in our community. Wanting to bring um, a level playing field for all of our citizens is, drives me. Love what you do. Um, a lot of economic developers don't come in as economic developers. Um, we're just learning a lot of us come in, we just kind of fall into the job. But for those who are thinking that I want to be an economic developer, they've already decided that there's a place for them. And my, my advice would be find an experienced practitioner that you can latch on to that would um, mentor you. Don't get lost. Don't lose your passion. Uh, I'd say don't lose your passion is one of the I actually did. I um, didn't know anything about economic development when I came in in my interview. The last question was, so what do you think economic development is? And I thought, oh my gosh, I just lost the job. But they weren't really looking for economic development background. And um, as I worked in the field, I was loving it more and more. And yes, my mentor was Edward Nelson. He hired me, and he's still my number one, um, uh, my number one, um, how would you say that? He, he is my first call, yes. Yeah, he's not here at this conference, and I had sent him a text to say I miss him being here. But absolutely, he, he is a consummate economic development professional, um, loves the work, all areas of the work, and made me feel that um, it's such a broad field that, yeah, there's a place for us. Uh, the toughest part of the job, I'd say getting people to the community to really understand what economic development is. We, we have a term which says they don't get it. Um, it's a difficult, it's not a science, it's, it's a, it is a difficult area because it encompasses so many different things. Um, community development is a part of economic development we're beginning to really understand that workforce development is so tied to economic development. Bringing jobs in, um, how do you bring jobs in when you don't have an appropriate workforce? In terms of the, the workforce side, we're beginning to, to, to find those resources. Everyone, everyone is getting that part of it now. The other part is financing, is access to capital. Um, entrepreneurial development, 
providing economic support in the underserved community. We've got a, a new area um, in the underserved community, the immigrant community, that is a big part of the economic development in a community. But we're not figured out yet how we serve them. So providing access to capital for all areas of um, growth, all areas of business growth, is a big challenge. And um, we don't have the answers on it. Well, if you think about it, if you don't have a job, it's hard to do the other things. So having a well-paying job is a good place to start. And yes, economic developers focus do focus on creating that um, lifestyle, having uh, live, work, and play. But you, it, it, it goes back to what we call a job with a livable wage is, is important for quality, having any kind of quality of life. Um, being able to afford your rent, being able to buy food, being able to work and play. So if IDC wasn't here, if I wasn't able to be a member of IDC and be able to attend the conferences and the, the training that is provided, I couldn't be the economic development professional that I am today. I think, not I think, I know. I owe so much to what I get from IEDC. I am definitely, and I thank God my mentor was uh, an IEDC man, and I'm an IEDC woman, and I encourage everybody who is in economic development to become a member of IEDC because we get more than just, it, it's more than, it's like family. Um, but it's every day there's something new. Every conference I come to, I, have some, I bring something back. So even though today my job isn't general, broad-based economic development, I have those skills and people call me and I am excited that I can provide economic development answers to some of the problems in our community. So it's more than, and it's, it's having a job, but it's, it's also having, it's more than just having a job. A lot of people have jobs, but they're, they still can't participate because they're not making a livable wage. So having a good quality job, and, and I want to make it clear, as economic developers, we don't create jobs. We facilitate job creation, or we, we facilitate jobs coming into our community. Or with business expansion, we facilitate um, helping business to grow so they can, they can create more jobs. The jobs are created by our businesses. And so we support our businesses as, as much as we can and encourage incentives, providing incentives that would make it easier for companies to create jobs. But at the end of the day, Individuals need a decent paying job so they can take care of their families, provide the basic needs, and participate in the larger um, economic opportunities in the community. I think we'll have a more resilient community when we have a lot of people who can participate at that level.